Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have not one, but two synthetic challenges for you to sink your teeth into. So without any further ado, let's dive into our first one right away. Here I have cyclohexane carboxylic acid and we are going to be turning that one into cyclohexyl methanamine. And the first thing that I always do for all synthesis problems, I check the number of carbons we have in the starting material and in the product as well. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven carbons and in my product i have one two three four five six and seven carbons as well so here we have the same number of carbons which means that we are not going to be either adding or removing any carbons from our molecule and the only thing that we are going to be doing here is the functional group transformation so let's do our retrosynthetic analysis and think about this potential synthesis sequence in reverse like we would normally do in cases like this. So here I can see that my final product is a primary amine. So I'm going to immediately think about all the different ways I can make such a molecule. A few different methods pop into my head right away. It's going to be something like maybe a Gabriel synthesis or reduction of azides or maybe reduction of amides. And since we have a carboxylic acid as our starting material, probably the reduction of an amide, which is the carboxylic acid derivative, is the best method in this case. Which means that we now need to come up with a way how to make an amide from our carboxylic acid. And that is actually pretty easy. You see, when it comes to the carboxylic acid derivatives, we normally follow the same path for the majority of those transformations. We first convert our uh, carboxylic acid into the corresponding acid chloride, and then then react that with whatever nucleophile we want to replace that chlorine and that going to give us the corresponding carboxylic acid derivative. So in this case I'm going to convert my acid into the corresponding acid chloride using the reaction with thionyl chloride which can be done either neat or in the presence of pyridine. Then I will react the resulting chloride with two equivalents of ammonia to get the amide. In this case, one of the equivalents of the ammonia here is the sacrificial base. We need it because the co-product in this case is going to be HCl, and unless we neutralize it, forming the NH4Cl, that is going to just start reacting with our original ammonia and essentially killing that thing. You could also see this type of reaction done in the presence of pyridine, but since ammonia is dirt cheap, there is really no reason to use a fancy basic uh, solvent in this case. Finally, we can take our amide and reduce it with lithium aluminum hydride to get the corresponding amine after the corresponding aqueous workup. This reduction is something that I see a lot of students forget about because all other carboxylic acid derivatives normally give us primary alcohols upon reduction. However, when it comes to amides and nitriles as well, those guys make the corresponding amines instead. And while it might seem like an annoying exception from the general trend, it is one of the premier synthetic pathways to the primary amines. So make sure you remember this reaction for the finals. Now, my next synthesis here is a little trickier. If we pay close attention to our carbons, we can see that we've lost a carbon. And since there are not too many useful reactions that cut carbon-carbon bonds, this one might be a bit of a challenge unless you know a couple of specific rearrangements. One of such rearrangements is the Hoffman rearrangement. Yep, it's the very same Hoffman you know and love for the Hoffman elimination and the Hoffman rule. That dude was really prolific, especially around the chemistry of nitrogen. And the other one is the Kurzus rearrangement. And I want to say here and now, so you remember it once and for all, it is pronounced Kurzus rearrangement. Not courteous or anything of that sort. Theodor Kurzus was a German chemist who discovered this reaction in late 19th century. So, Please do have enough courtesy at least to pronounce his last name correctly. But enough with my rants. 
both these reactions, both these rearrangements make a primary amine and they lose a carbon atom, which is exactly what we are going to be looking at in this case. And as we can see, both reactions are dealing with the derivatives of carboxylic acids. One, the Hoffman rearrangement, the first one, is dealing with the amides, and we already know how to make an amide, so probably we are going to go with this reaction for our synthetic purposes here. So here I am going to follow the same steps as in the last synthesis to make the corresponding amide, then I am going to treat my amide with bromine in the base, and finally hydrolyze it in the same pot, and voila! we get our products. Now, suppose you didn't know about Hoffman or Kurzius rearrangement. How would you approach the synthesis then? Tell me your ideas in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys as you always spark interesting conversations. And as always, thank you for watching till the very end. Remember to boop the like button on your way out and subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates if you haven't done so yet. Watch this awesome video next and I will see you tomorrow.